took me too much. You're trying to get to the what? It took me top. Daddy, pretend I'm out of bed and I'm walking to you because I can leave. No, you're not. <laughs> no, pause me over here. <laughs> All right, for their homeschool group lunches, I have burritos, leftover burritos from last night, veggies and homemade hummus, pineapple, tangerines, go macro bars, and Easter chocolate, leftover from Easter. And we got some pistachios and almonds too. Can you believe how fast this year is going by? It's almost May. I can't believe that. I just can't believe how fast it is going by. Are you talking? It makes me think of my mom and how amazing of a mother she is and the memories I had of her growing up and what she's taught me. The things that really stuck with me. And there's a couple key memories with my mom that stuck with me throughout my life and still are with me today. Positive memories that I'm really thankful for and lessons that she's She probably wouldn't even, actually no, I have told her about them, we've talked about it before. But before I told her, she probably wouldn't even know how important they were to my upbringing and to how I viewed the world as I was growing older. So one of them was a recurring conversation that I had with my mom multiple times when I was in elementary school. Because I actually kind of got made fun of a lot in elementary school. I really didn't have many friends. I had one or two friends throughout my entirety of elementary school. And I have a lot of memories of bullying and not being treated kindly. And I know there's a lot of people who experienced that as well. I think it was just too much for a lot of people. <laughs> Daddy! You're never going to be too much. You're amazing. And I know some people do struggle with that, with that feeling of being too much. Definitely not everybody, but that's something that I went through elementary school and had that image of myself because I really was outgoing and wanted to make new friends, but I think I was just not a cool kid by any sense of the I always was very outgoing and wanting to make new friends. Hi, you want to be my friend? And there was that cool kind of response where, you know, children are growing and evolving and just like putting their guard up and... It's all natural and everything like that. I definitely had moments of being teased and called names and made fun of and laughed at in large crowds. And every time I would come home from school crying and so sad about the experience I had experienced that day, my mom always had such amazing wisdom to share with me. She didn't just comfort me as moms would. She always gave me some really great perspective behind the why if somebody had harsh things to say or was picking on you and that type of thing. She always reminded me to reflect on the experience as every individual is going through something in their life. And someone making fun of another is generally a reflection of something they're going on inside and they're probably unhappy inside for a certain reason or maybe they learned something from someone else through an experience that they had that someone treated them that way and she always reminded me to continue being myself being friendly with others and just to keep being me and I think that was the best advice that she could have ever given me because she didn't tell me to try to change myself she didn't take me shopping to get cooler clothes or to change the way that I am so that I fit in more with the crowd and with my class she just wanted me to be myself. And so every time the next day I'd come right back to class all confident, ready to take on, be myself, and I of course would get made fun of and that would be hard and I was still evolving and growing. But her steady reminders to just keep being myself and keep being friendly and to always have empathy for others and what they're going through if they aren't treating you well and to realize that they have their own personal story and there's a reason why they're taking something out on you. That helped me so much to look at it from a broader perspective. I took that with me throughout my whole life and a lot of those insecurities have faded over the years from my experience especially because I've done a lot of mind work on the topic with my friend Heather McKean to help heal from a lot of those insecurities that I had in elementary school because really your childhood shapes a lot of who you feel when you get older anyways I am so glad that I had my mom's steady confidence in myself to continue being myself and to just love everybody and I just love you mom she's also coming to visit soon so I'm very excited to see my mom that's all I have to say about that Boom. Another core memory with my mom was when I was a preteen. I was playing Where in the World is Carmen San Diego on the family computer upstairs when my mom called me down for dinner. I asked if I could please eat dinner upstairs tonight because I was really into playing this game. 
and she said, no, Ellen, I don't want you to tonight because we're having spaghetti and I don't want it to get on the carpet. I pleaded with her, oh, please, mom, I'll be really careful not to spill. So she said, fine. Then as I'm carrying my plate of spaghetti upstairs, right as I entered the computer room, I tripped and the entire plate of spaghetti spilled on the floor. I walked downstairs to tell her what had happened with my head hanging low and she sighed, all right, let's go clean it up. She didn't yell at me or scream or throw her hands in the air or shame me. She didn't say, I told you so, or any of that. She simply helped clean up the mess and just stayed calm and loving. She knew that I was doing my best. Nothing else needed to be said. It's in those moments that I learned my mom loves me unconditionally. And that's exactly what I hope to convey to my children too. So clearly my mom has helped me feel empowered and confident in my life and I can only hope to instill that same confidence in my children as they age. And mother figures, whether that's biological or just a mother figure in your life, have the ability to teach so much about ourselves, whether that's self-confidence or self-care. They kind of go hand in hand. How we treat ourselves with the thoughts that we think and even how we treat our body, inside and out. I'm about to hop in the shower, but first I'm gonna dry brush. I love dry brushing. Daily body brushing enhances circulation, it plumps the skin, and it supports lymphatic drainage. You wanna do short, soft strokes to stimulate and exfoliate. It really is full body self-care from head to toe. This body brush is from Osea, as well as the products that I use after my shower religiously. What's so cool too is that Osea is a mother-daughter brand, borrowing from their grandmother's wisdom. They have a really amazing story. Female founded and family operated since 1996, Osea is clean, vegan, cruelty-free, seaweed-based skin and body care, inspired by the story of their founder's grandmother who was a great believer in the power of the sea. Right now they have a limited edition Golden Glow Body Trio for Mother's Day. It's a three-piece glow boosting and skin smoothing body set that's the perfect gift for all skin types and would make an incredible Mother's Day gift either to yourself or a mother figure in your life. The plant-based body brush preps the skin for optimal moisture by sweeping away dead skin cells for firmer, more radiant and toned skin. The Indaria Algae Body Oil is clinically proven to instantly improve skin elasticity and delivers deep moisturization with a rush of antioxidant-rich hydration that softens nourishes and firms and the anti-aging body balm is a new favorite of mine that smells incredible and combines the lasting hydration of a lotion with the anti-aging benefits of a serum so for a limited time you can get 10 percent off with the code ellen golden i hope you enjoy this special gift The whole garden? Yeah, that's why I got a big one. I did like a little wordly one. <laughs> no purple. That's okay, you can make purple, remember? Um, remember what colors make purple? Yeah. Red and blue. Red and blue. Making purple. Try mixing the darker blue with it, too. Go on. Mom, I made purple water. Yeah. Oh, that's a really cool color we made. Oh, that's a very pretty purple. So what, are we gonna put purple flowers in the garden maybe? Yeah, and pink flowers. I mean, orange flowers. And gold flowers. I think it's gonna have blue. Whoa. Or the sky. I think I'm gonna start with the sky. A cloud and sun sky. I need blue now. Ooh, that is how you make that. And then you can blend like this. See how when you dab the white with the blue? And jump in muddy carpet. Ah, finally made that biggest blue. Perfect. Oh, I don't agree. I think yours is beautiful in its own way. Yeah. Mine is better. Oh, uh, we're both better. Yeah. This one. Hi, Colfax. Can I help you? Can we give him one to do too? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay, let's give him a picture. You go in here. 
So you can get your own paintbrush. Here. Oh, you already got a big glob of brown, didn't you? I'm making chocolate. <laughs> it's beautiful, Scout. I'm gonna need that. This is Kofi's version of mixing paints. Let's see Kofi's drawing. Every like Lovely. Cool. Kofi shows up for two minutes and this is what happens. <laughs> You're a fantastic artist. You're always experimenting and you just have I fun. I never would want to stop Because we're always growing and experimenting and being creative is one of the most beautiful parts of life. To make the bubble you look like that. Like that one? Yeah. yeah. This is one of my favorite lunches right now where I take leftover beans and rice or a leftover lentil curry and then I serve it with a bed of greens, some purple sauerkraut, avocado, salsa, tomato, and I have some cashew sour cream on here today. So yummy. Always love finding ways to add more tender greens and vegetables into my day. Nice big bowl too. Eating until I'm completely satisfied has been one of the biggest reasons why I feel so good because I love eating whole plant foods. And you don't just eat a little bowl of something, you eat a whole big bowl until you're totally satisfied. Other things I did this week besides lots of home education, meal prepping, and working was bring a meal to a friend. I made coconut curried lentils and I went with Scout to drop it off. <laughs> this week and went to get my hair done. Even though it takes effort to carve out time to do something for myself, it's definitely worth it. Alright you guys, what do you think? I love it so much. Just lightened it up a little bit. I have been wanting to lighten my hair for such a long time, for years. Because back in the day when I didn't work as much and I had way less kids, I had more time to go to the beach and my hair would just naturally lighten in the sun. But I just don't get to the beach there as much as I used to. So my hair was just like feeling a little dark and I really wanted my light hair. And she didn't even do that much. She just did like a little bit on the top and it lightened it up so much. And thankfully my hair still feels so healthy. I have such like thick and shiny hair and I'm really thankful for that. And whoa! I love it! So you know those days where there's joy in all the little moments, even the imperfect ones, and you just feel so grateful to be alive? That's how the rest of this week and this day felt for me. We drove up the mountain to meet up with friends and watch the sunset, roast marshmallows, and play music. The kids rode down the hill on their boogie boards like they were sledding in the snow and we could see the moon right where the sun was setting. It was beautiful. It was the most relaxing and joyful night I'd had in a while.
feel grateful for so much, like the ability to prepare and enjoy healthy food, like my body that housed and grew five wonderful children, like painting surrounded by trees and birds with my daughter, my first girl. I dreamed about the mother-daughter relationship I would have with her, and here it is. I hope to infuse in my children's lives positive memories that shape confidence and love for others like my mom did for me. And lastly, anytime I focus too much on my goals or where I want to be and aren't there yet, I like to reflect on my life and remember where I came from to bring me to the present moment. That right now, in this moment of time, I'm exactly where I had dreamed of and worked for for so many years. I was so excited and looking forward to having babies and raising them. And here I am. I was so excited to have a community of good friends and eventually get a piece of land to grow food on. We worked so hard to get there, and here we are. There's this quote that says something along the lines of, you might not be exactly where you want to be, but look how far you've come. But really, I'm exactly where I want to be. And we can feel this way in almost any point in life, because even some of the hardest moments in my life, in the present, it's really hard to be grateful for it or to understand why. But later, even years later sometimes, I can look back and reflect on it, and I'm always grateful for what it taught me. And I always realized there was a reason why it happened that way. If we focus too much on the future or the past, we miss the present moment and what it's here to teach us. Don't try this at home. Oh, go, go, go. <laughs> See what you got. <laughs> See if you're getting stronger from your lunch. Okay, your muscle, let me test. Very strong, very powerful.